Welcome to History of Health Information Technology in the U.S. Software Certification and Regulation. This lecture will review the history of efforts in the U.S. related to software certification and regulation of health information technology, specifically electronic health records. As a result of the High Tech Act, there is recent interest in certifying electronic health records, or EHRs. The objectives for this unit, Software Certification and Regulation, are to discuss the history of FDA involvement in the regulation of clinical software, describe the origins, focus, and activities of CCHIT, discuss the changes in the EHR certification process as a result of the High Tech Act, and discuss the recent efforts to improve the safety of EHRs. Although regulation of computerized physician order entry and clinical decision support have also recently become a focus, discussions about regulation have been going on for over 20 years. Before going over that history and the factors that led to the recent interest, let's look at what is involved in certification and regulation, specifically by the Food and Drug Administration, abbreviated as the FDA. The use of certified EHRs is required for the incentive payments under the High Tech Act. Certification focuses on functionality of individual EHRs. Specifically, certification assures that EHRs are capable of meeting the criteria for meaningful use. These criteria include, but are not limited to, the ability to capture certain data in structured form, provide problem list, and implement decision support rules. The important point to note is that the testing for certification examines the EHR capabilities, not how the EHRs are set up in practice. The Center for Devices and Radiological Health, abbreviated CDRH, is a part of the FDA that was formed in the 1970s to oversee the safety and effectiveness of the growing amount of new medical equipment that was being developed. The CDRH is also responsible for oversight of certain types of medical software. For example, the software embedded in a device to run it is evaluated as part of the device regulation. Similarly, software systems that are an accessory to a regulated device also fall under CDRH regulation. An example might be software that is added to an electrocardiogram machine to provide an interpretation of the results. The tricky area is standalone computer systems like EHRs. Whether the CDRH should regulate them is currently under discussion. Regulation for the FDA or CDRH for drugs and devices includes pre-market and post-market review. Pre-market review includes review of the design and manufacturing processes to assure that they are done using standard practices. It also includes reviewing the results of tests of the system, such as clinical trials, to assure that the drug or device is safe and effective. Post-market review includes evaluating reports of problems that have been encountered once the drug or device is used in practice. If there are sufficient problems reported, the FDA can withdraw its approval. Software systems such as EHRs are difficult to fit easily into this process, in part because they are usually configured by the users in ways that are not easily tested in advance. They often have to interact with a variety of other systems, and when there are problems, there are usually multiple causes, not just the hardware and software per se.
While certification and FDA regulation can both provide important services to EHR users, neither certifying EHR functionality nor regulating the hardware and software will guarantee that the implementation will be done safely, that the systems will be configured appropriately to meet users' needs, or that it will work exactly as intended. The bottom line is there are many aspects to implementing EHRs that are not addressed by either the certification or FDA regulation process. However, that has not stopped efforts to grapple with what the appropriate role of such regulation is. So let's look at some of the history of these attempts. In 1989, a draft rule was formulated by Frank Young, then head of the FDA, on whether FDA regulation was appropriate for standalone software, such as the diagnostic decision support systems that were being developed in the late 1980s. Dr. Young formulated what has been called the principle of competent human intervention, or the idea of a learned intermediary. What this means is that between the device producing output and a patient receiving the results of that output, there is a knowledgeable person interpreting those results. This person is capable of choosing or not choosing to act on the results. The draft rule stated that devices where there was competent human intervention were exempt from FDA regulation. In addition, devices that merely served as archives of data were also exempt. For the most part, EHRs with clinical decision support capabilities fall into the exempt category. Although it was proposed as a draft rule over 20 years ago, there has not yet been any more definitive ruling. However, over the years, there has been some re-examination of those policies. In 1996, the FDA held a workshop that focused on standalone software systems. There were various types of systems discussed. One was known as a closed loop system, where the system made assessments and recommendations that were acted upon without the physician being involved. An example could be systems that decided on dosage and administered drug therapy. Another type was the open loop system that allowed the physician to function as a learned intermediary, that is, that involved the principle of competent human intervention. An example of that type of system was the diagnostic decision support systems that presented suggestions to the physician of possible diagnoses the patient might have. One of the outcomes of the workshop was a recommendation to classify systems in terms of risk to the patient. Another recommendation was that the FDA conduct software quality audits that reviewed in detail the system development process. The workshop did not result in any significant change in FDA policy. There was no compelling reason to take on the regulation of EHRs. The recommendations from the FDA were reviewed by a group of professional associations with interests in health information technology. These organizations wrote a position paper that was published simultaneously in two professional journals to ensure that two key stakeholders, physicians and informatics professionals, would read the article. Jamia was the major informatics journal and Annals of Internal Medicine was a top medical journal.
The position paper recommended that the FDA focus their reviews on high-risk systems and those with limited opportunity for competent human intervention. However, the paper also recommended that developers of all systems follow good manufacturing and design practices and that those who buy the systems institute local software monitoring for any adverse events that occur after implementation. The position paper recommended that hospitals have software review committees whose job was to systematically monitor the implementation. Those recommendations, although they were good ones, did not make a change in FDA policy either. Most sites do local monitoring anyway, but it may not be systematic with a designated committee charged with doing it. In 1999, the Institute of Medicine published its report, To Air is Human, which called attention to patient safety issues with a focus on adverse drug events caused by patients receiving the incorrect dosage or the wrong drug. The report summarized a variety of literature that had been published earlier, some of which indicated that information technology especially computerized provider order entry with clinical decision support, could prevent medication errors. This was the first major report that reached a large audience, showing the potential impact that health IT could have. The first report was followed by several others, focused on various aspects of quality improvement and patient safety, with each one making a strong case for the potential of health IT. In 2000, the LeapFrog Group was formed. The LeapFrog Group was a group of large businesses interested in using their collective power. Since they were paying a significant portion for the health insurance of their employees to improve the quality of care that hospitals were delivering. One of their key recommendations was that hospitals should be using CPOE to reduce medication errors. As you can see, since the initial IOM report in 1999, there was a growing interest in both patient safety and the potential for health IT to improve it. This also led to several related efforts to improve the quality of the electronic health record software itself. In 2004, the Office of the National Coordinator for HIT was established with the goal of increasing the use of health IT. In the same year, the Certification Commission for Health Information Technology, or CCHIT was formed. CCHIT was a nonprofit private organization formed by three bodies representing some of the key HIT professional and industry groups. AHIMA represented health information management professionals, HIMS represented health IT professionals, and NAHIT, the National Alliance for Health Information Technology, represented a variety of vendor and industry stakeholders. The aim was to develop criteria for certification of EHR systems to assure that they met specific functional criteria so that purchasers of these systems could be assured of system quality. In 2006, CCHIT received a contract from the Office of the National Coordinator to develop certification criteria, making the development of these criteria a public-private partnership involving many key stakeholders. In 2006, CCHIT was designated as an EHR certification body and began to certify a variety of commercial systems. CCHIT began with inpatient systems and then moved to certify outpatient systems. Note, however, that they only were certifying individual commercial systems. 
even though many hospitals had homegrown systems, and EHRs that linked together systems from multiple vendors. Until 2010, CCHIT was the only certification agency recognized by the government for certifying the functional capabilities of EHRs. After the 1999 publication of the IOM report on medical errors and their consequences for patient safety, research took several directions. One was, as we have mentioned, the research showing how CPOE and clinical decision support tools can prevent medication errors and improve the quality and safety of care. A second research stream suggested that implementing CPOE and other HIT interventions may cause unintended negative consequences. Joan Ash and her colleagues found that CPOE can sometimes lead to negative reactions and other problems, especially when best practices for implementation were not followed. In 2005, Russ Capel published a study in the influential journal JAMA that implied that CPOE itself was a threat to patient safety by not only not preventing, but facilitating errors. There were other articles that blamed the information systems for causing deaths of patients, although later studies found that when implementation was done right, there was no increase in mortality. So, in the period leading up to the present, we find that there were two different views of health IT being promoted. One was that IT had the potential to improve patient safety and quality, and the other was that health IT could be a cause of errors. With the advent of the High Tech Act in 2009 promoting meaningful use of certified EHRs, the forces leading to both certification and regulation were mobilized. It was anticipated that there would be an increased use of HIT. The Act required that certification bodies be established that would certify that EHRs had the functionality to support healthcare providers being able to meet the criteria for meaningful use. This would help providers select appropriate systems. Anticipating increased use also led to more concerns about the potential dangers of EHRs. There were congressional hearings examining contracting processes that might discourage reporting of problems. Many of the reported problems, whether or not they could be solved by regulation, received a good deal of publicity in the popular press. Amid these concerns, the FDA, which had been compiling some of the problems reported to it, is again re-examining its processes for regulation of clinical software systems. The Office of the National Coordinator, or ONC, addressed these issues in several ways. As part of the temporary certification program, organizations could apply to become official ONC authorized testing and certification bodies, or ATCBs. By December 2010, there were six ATCBs. These certification bodies focused on evaluating EHRs to see if they had the functionality needed to support meaningful use. Once the permanent certification program began to be established in the summer of 2012, 
there was a separation between the testing bodies and the certification bodies. Although the CCHIT was authorized to perform both functions until it stopped operating in 2014. The testing bodies work with vendors to test whether their EHRs meet the certification criteria. But it is the authorized certification bodies, or ACBs, that actually certify the EHRs. In addition to promoting the use of EHRs, the ONC also addressed the issue of the potential for unintended negative consequences by asking the Institute of Medicine, or IOM, to convene a panel to review the evidence on the safety of health IT. This IOM report was issued in November 2011. In it, there are several recommendations. The IOM panel recommended that within a year, the government develop a plan for both assessing and minimizing the risks of health IT. This plan should include risk management requirements for vendors. They also recommended that there be greater transparency in terms of vendors publicly listing their products with ONC and facilitating sharing information about health IT and patient safety. This included avoiding contracts that prohibit sharing information and also making the information publicly available. They also said that there should be a new safety council to evaluate criteria for monitoring and assessing the safe use of health IT. In addition, there should be public reporting of adverse events. And there should be an independent agency to investigate and report on deaths or serious injuries associated with health IT. The IOM did not recommend immediate regulation by the FDA. However, they did say that the government should monitor progress on these recommendations and that if not enough progress was being made, the FDA should be ready to regulate these systems. The final recommendation was that more research was needed to develop better methods of designing and implementing systems. ONC has responded to the IOM report in several ways. ONC and the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality collaborated with the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST. They developed measures of EHR usability, since many complaints about the safety of EHRs involve usability issues. For instance, if a menu of choices for medication orders has the choices spaced too close together, it makes it more likely that an incorrect choice could be made accidentally. NIST developed guidelines for both vendors who design systems and the IT personnel in hospitals and physicians' offices who configure them. In addition, in the fall of 2012, ONC issued new certification criteria for 2014 for systems that were being certified for both Stage 1 or Stage 2 meaningful use. These criteria included a requirement for what was called safety-enhanced design. Safety-enhanced design requires that user-centered design principles be incorporated, especially in regard to the key EHR functions that are shown on the screen. In addition, certified products need to attend to quality management principles. In the spring of 2016, the Office of the National Coordinator proposed a new rule that gives them more direct responsibility in regard to the certification process. The rule requires ONC to directly review the certified health information technology and to take any needed actions to address problems. It also provides for ONC to more directly oversee the actual testing labs that test the products. And it requires more transparency, including public reporting, of the surveillance activities of the certifying bodies. There are those who feel that regulation is needed to protect both the patient and purchaser from faulty systems and unscrupulous vendors. Others argue that increased regulation will stifle innovation, including design innovations that can make the systems safer. The IOM recommendations recognize the variety of factors that contribute to the safety 
of Health IT. A report known as the FIDESIA report, prepared in 2015 collaboratively by the FDA, the ONC, and the Federal Communications Commission, recommended a risk-based framework for regulation, similar to that proposed by Miller and Gardner and Associates in the 1990s. Whether the FDA will wind up regulating EHRs may depend on what happens with these recommendations. As we said earlier, Certification and regulation may be needed to address certain problems in system design, but these issues must not overshadow the need to follow good practices in implementing EHRs as we go forward. The adage of Hippocrates to first do no harm is important to keep in mind as the discussion continues. This concludes Software Certification and Regulation. In summary, we discussed the history of FDA involvement in the regulation of clinical software. We described the origins, focus, and activities related to EHR certification, including the changes in the EHR certification process as a result of the High Tech Act. Finally, we discussed the Institute of Medicine report on health IT and patient safety and the responses to the report, including the 2015 FIDESIA report.